Good morning, everybody. Happy Memorial Day weekend to you. So glad that you guys are all here today, this morning. I'm really excited to uh, share today's message with you. I want to talk to you specifically about spiritual warfare. Would you say that with me? Spiritual warfare. Uh, I'm excited today because I really want to give the devil a black eye. All right. You have me if you know that the devil is under our feet. Okay, we have we are overcomers. We are victorious because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ and, and the finished work of the cross. And I want to talk to you a little bit, and and just talk talk to you about the truth of who the, who the devil actually is, and uh, the truth about uh, the weapons that we've been given to engage in victorious spiritual warfare. Uh, this Easter, I um, shared with you a. Uh, survey asking you what you would most like to, to hear about, to learn about from the Bible. And guess what the number one response was? Spiritual warfare. People want to know about it. People are confused about it. There's lots of uh, questions that surround this topic. But you remember that part in the Lord's Prayer where it says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And some translations actually say the evil one. But spiritual warfare is a very important topic for us to understand. Some people are skeptical of it, while other people are superstitious about it. But, but it's very real. Spiritual warfare is a very real thing according to the scriptures. And today I just want to take some time to expose the devil. Expose him for who he is. Because how many of you know an exposed devil is a defeated devil, okay? And I'm going to give you four very powerful weapons that we need to know as we engage in spiritual warfare in our everyday lives. So if you're taking notes, I want you to get your, your paper and pen out. I'm going to give you lots of scriptures and things to, to write down over the next few minutes. But you see, when we get saved, we, when we get born again and we decide to follow Jesus Christ real fast, we're going to learn a very important lesson, and, it's, and, and there's a quote that's written by Dr. Warren Wearsby, and it says this, The Christian life is not a playground. It's a battleground. And we must be on guard at all times. Not only is there a real God who loves you and has an amazing plan and purpose for your life, but there's also a very real enemy. A very real devil and his demons who hates you and wants to oppose everything that, that you want to obey God in. He wants to oppose God's plan for your life. I was thinking about this this week. And, you know, before we came to Christ, before I came to Christ, the devil wanted to just stop that altogether. He wanted to just stop it in its tracks so that I would never come to Jesus Christ. He did everything he could to keep me from hearing and from responding to the message of the gospel. He, would, he worked overtime to keep my eyes blinded, to keep my heart hardened, and to keep my mind completely closed. But thank God that he didn't, he didn't succeed in that. Because the Lord stepped in and, and saved me, and I heard the message of the gospel, and I responded. And many of you have done the same thing. But once I responded to that message of salvation, the, the enemy didn't, didn't stop there. He, he, would, he would want to work really hard to take away the word that was sown in my heart. He tried to make me question God's word. He tried to convince me that, that all of this was a fairy tale and my salvation experience was just an emotional experience. It really wasn't real. And the devil tried to take that away. But thank God he did not succeed. And if the devil wasn't successful in those kinds of attempts, he tries, he tries to entrap me. In all kinds of sin, like greed or sexual sin or, or gossip or, or lying or cheating, whatever. But, but the point is this, and we all have to recognize this for what it is. The Christian life is a spiritual battleground. It is a spiritual battleground. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, can anybody relate to the battle? And that's going on in the spirit. Even, even recently, 
Um, ever since my God-given assignment has come into focus, as we've started this, this work in this church, my wife and I, we moved from Tennessee to plant this church, and, and our mission has, all, has been all about helping people to know God, to find freedom, to discover their purpose, and to make a difference. And as that purpose has just been dialed in and locked in in our hearts, you can bet the enemy is not excited about that. You see, every sermon that I, that I preach, I want, every lesson that I teach, every ministry opportunity that I have, I want to communicate the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, and I want to communi communicate the truth of God's word. Do you think the devil is excited about that? No. Well, as a growing church, as a congregation, as a loving family of God, we look, at, we look at what's happening corporately, and we're advancing the mission of Jesus as a church. I mean, people are getting saved. People are getting healed. People are getting delivered. Marriages are being uh, strengthened. People are getting decided, uh, getting discipled, and people are stepping up as leaders. People are learning how to serve in the power of, of giving and praying, and the kingdom of God is being advanced through this local church. Do you think the devil is excited about that? All of these things, when we realize our God-given purpose, when we take steps to advance the kingdom of God and to walk in what he's called us to walk in, all of this, the enemy despises. He hates it, and he will, he will try to oppose it in every single direction that he possibly can. I mean, this week, just for an example... Like, I experienced some of the most intense spiritual warfare this week, and, and if I tried to explain it to you, I couldn't. Because, like, outwardly, it doesn't make any kind of sense. Like, my marriage is great. My relationship with God is solid. Our church is growing, and do, we're doing great. We're advancing. We're, we're raising up leaders. And so, like, I look at my circumstances, and there's absolutely no reason why I should be feeling the way that I've been feeling this week, but I felt this oppression, this attack, this, this spiritual darkness trying to discourage me, bring me into despair even, bring me into all kinds of distraction. And why? It's because we're in a battle. And I just want to take some time this, this morning and, and really expose who the devil is and talk about some of the weapons that we have as Christians to be victorious in Christ every time we engage in spiritual warfare. I want you to write these down. I'm going to put some things up on the, up on the screen. Listen, every step in the right direction will be met with spiritual opposition. Every time we're doing something for God, every time we're taking good, positive steps in our relationship with him or towards our God-given purpose, guess what? The enemy's not happy, and it will be opposed. There will be some pushback. Write this down. The bigger the step, the greater the opposition. I just want you to think about this this morning. The bigger the step, the greater the the opposition. Why would the devil fight so hard? Well, it's because something good, something great, it's because it's coming. It's right around the corner. God is doing something wonderful. And so there's opposition to try to stop it in its tracks. And the third thing I want you to write down is this. Opposition is a sign that we're on the right course. We're on the right path. We're doing something good. We're doing something that's making a difference in the, king, in the kingdom of darkness is not happy about it. So maybe you can relate to that today. Maybe you're here today and, you're, and maybe you're taking steps towards your destiny, towards your purpose, towards your growing relationship with God, and maybe you're experiencing some spiritual warfare, and perhaps you haven't even realized that it actually is spiritual warfare. And you're facing it, and you're not sure what to do. I mean, maybe recently you got saved, you got born again, you decided to follow Christ, you even got baptized, and there the enemy is trying to question all of that. 
trying to make you disbelieve, trying to distract you away from it. Maybe you made a commitment recently to start digging into the Bible, start learning verses, start memorizing things. Do you think the devil's going to be happy about that? Absolutely not. He will do everything he can to keep you away from spending time in this word. Maybe you're here today and you felt God call you to be more of a, pray, a prayer, a prayer warrior. And, he, and in fact, I was talking to somebody this, uh, this week. They said, Pastor, this, uh, this, I've recently set up a war room, a prayer room in my house. And do you think the devil's excited about that? No, absolutely not. So that person can expect some spiritual pushback. And some spiritual opposition. Maybe you're, maybe you're starting to get connected in, through the growth track or, or in a life group. And the enemy is not happy about that at all. Maybe you've started giving. Maybe you, start, maybe you gave a big gift. Uh, maybe, you're, maybe you're just uh, stewarding your money in a godly way now rather than a worldly way now. Do you think the enemy is excited about that? Absolutely not. Maybe you started sharing your faith. Maybe you started getting boldness and asking God to give you opportunities to share your faith with other people. Maybe you're asking God, hey, I'd like to speak more about what God has done for me. I'd like to testify more. I'd like to, I'd like to be bold, and I need the empowerment of God upon my life so I, I can share my faith. My goodness, do you think the devil is excited about that? <clears throat> Maybe you're, maybe you're simply staking, taking steps of obedience. Large steps, small steps, everything in between. And the enemy sees that. And he wants to oppose that and stop it right in its tracks. Can anybody relate to what I'm saying here today? Okay, so if you're experiencing spiritual opposition, I want you to think about this. It's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. Okay, it means that God is up to something good in your life. You are making progress. You are doing things that, that is on the right path. So I want you to be encouraged today, and I want you to hear the word of the Lord from, from the Apostle Paul in Ephesians. If you have your Bible, open it up. It will be up on the screen, too. I want you to see these words from Paul. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord. And in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand. Right? So that you can take your stand against what? The devil's schemes. <clears throat> he's got schemes. He's got plans. He's got things that he's, he knows that are weaknesses, that are vulnerabilities for you. And he will try his best to scheme ways to trap you, to lie to you, to, to accuse you, to bring you under a condemnation and to make you bound for our struggle is not against your wife your husband your coworkers your boss your children for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. How many of you know that there is more going on than meets the eye? Right? There is more going on than you can see with your physical eye. And our struggle, Paul tells us, is not with things that we can see. Our struggle is a spiritual one. And he goes on to say this, therefore, because of that struggle, here's what I want you to know. Here's what I want you to do. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when that day comes, when that day of evil comes, and that you may be able to stand your ground. You need to be able to stand your ground, to stand firm. And after you have done everything, to stand that's the goal, right? To be able to stand firm upon the truth of God's word. To be able to stand firm. To, to stand unshakable. 
and say, no, this is my identity in Christ. I am saved. I am a child of God. I am chosen. God is for me. He's not against me. And, I, and he has a plan for my life. Nothing can separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And you know what? I'm going to stand right there. And whatever the enemy may try to do, I'm not moving off of that. I'm going to stay right there in Christ. So here's what we need to know about the devil. Write this down if you're taking notes. Number one, the devil is real. Okay, he's real. He would love for you to think that he's not. And if you don't think he's real, that doesn't change the fact that he's real. (laughs) He's not a symbol of evil. He's not just a metaphor. He's not a little red cartoon character with a red jumpsuit and horns and a pitchfork, right? He's not some impersonable um, cosmic force. Satan is not imagery or something that somebody dreamed up to explain the presence of evil. No, Satan is real. He is real, and the Bible makes it clear that he's powerful, he's evil, and he is absolutely opposed to God and God's plan for this world. Satan was originally, you should know this, he was originally created as one of God's greatest angels. He, got, he was created by God. His, Satan became jealous and prideful. He decided that he would lead a rebellion against God so that he could take God's place as the ruler of all creation. But guess what? Satan's rebellion crashed and burned. It failed. He was cast out of heaven along with one-third of the angels. You can read all this in the scripture, by the way. Now Satan and those who followed him are fallen angels, also known as demons. And they're no longer a part of God's heavenly army. And they've been separated from the glory that is in heaven. So you need to know that the devil is real, but he is a created being. He is a very limited being. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Number two, I want you to write that down. The devil is at war with us. He's at war with us. The devil is strategically and systematically scheming to do what? What's he want to accomplish? He wants to kill and to steal and to destroy from God's people. Satan's battle tactics are pretty simple. You might want to write these down. If this is a new area for you and you're just growing in this, his tactics are simple. He tries to deceive us with his lies. He tries to trick us, right? He tries to make us believe something that is absolutely not true. He tries to deceive us. With his lies. He also tries to accuse us and bring us into condemnation. He tries to divide us and cause strife and chaos among God's people. This is this is the tactics of the enemy. And not only that, but he tries to distort God's word. He tries to change it up. He tries to confuse you. He tries to, he tries to distort what you see as truth. And he will question, did God really say that? He will try to distort God's word over your life. And this has been his, his plan. These are his tactics, and he's pretty good at them. He's been doing this for a, a while, and the devil's pretty good devil. He's clever. He's wise to it. And he does his best to work overtime to bring us into condemnation, confusion, division. That's why Peter exhorts us in 1 Peter chapter 5. He says, be self-controlled and alert. Why? Your enemy, your enemy 
the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. What do you do? You resist him. Everybody say that with me. Resist him standing firm in your faith. Not only did Paul say it to us earlier, stand firm, but now Peter is reiterating the point and saying, you got to resist this. you got to stand firm in your faith. Now, that's, that's the bad news about the devil, okay? Now, let me give you some good news, okay? Jot this down if you're taking notes. The devil is subject to our God. <laughs> now, this is what we need to understand and be excited about. The devil is, was created. He is very limited uh, a being. He depends on God for his very existence. Now let's just expose who he is for just a second. And remember, God is all-powerful, right? God is everywhere present. He is all-knowing. Satan and his demons are none of these things. None of these things. He does not have unlimited power. He cannot be everywhere at once. And he does not know everything. And when Satan approaches God, think about this. He does not come to God as an equal. He comes to God as a subordinate. Someone who is under him. So it's not like there are two equal forces fighting each other like God versus Satan and who's going to win. No, it's not a question. God has all power. God has all authority. And so when Satan comes and opposes God or comes to God, he does not come to him as an equal. He comes to him as a subordinate. And without God's permission, think about this. Satan can absolutely do nothing. He cannot create or search the human heart. Therefore, the conflict between God and Satan is not really a struggle between two equal and opposing forces. All power, my friends, all authority belongs to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All authority belongs to him and to him alone. In fact, the devil is a defeated foe. (laughs) I'm going to take great pleasure in just saying that out loud. Sometimes as a pastor, I get to preach, but, but but sometimes I'm preaching to myself. And I'm just going to let you listen in, okay, on my sermon to myself. But I need to know, and you need to know, That the devil is a defeated foe because of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Satan has been disarmed and defeated. Look at the scripture in Colossians chapter 2. God stripped the spiritual rulers and powers of their authority. (laughs) Oh man, this is going to get good. I'm just going to amen myself, okay? I'm going to have fun with this. All right, with the cross, everybody say the cross. With the cross, he won the victory. And he showed the world that they, the spiritual forces, were what? Powerless. Oh, man, this is going to get good. All right, so if Satan is real and Satan is at war with us, but he is subject to to our God, and he has been defeated by the power of the blood of Jesus on the cross, what do, what, do, what do we need to do? What's our job? How do we effectively engage in spiritual warfare when, those, when that opposition comes to us, when those attacks come our way? What are we supposed to do? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul's going to tell us. He says this, for, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. You guys with me still? Okay. The weapons, everybody say weapons. The weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, our weapons have divine power. Everybody say divine power. 
They have divine power to demolish the enemy's strongholds. All right, now what's a stronghold? It's a place where it's, it's any lie of the devil that has, that has kept you trapped in slavery. That's what a stronghold is, something that has kept you bound, something that has kept you just trapped and stuck, something that the enemy has schemed and that has been built in your life. We are called to demolish strongholds through the weapons that God gives us and through his divine power. Because why? God wants us free. He wants us free. He who the Son sets free, we sang it a few minutes ago, is free indeed, right? He wants us free. So God has equipped us with four powerful weapons. I'm going to give them to you. Write this down. This is number one. This is awesome. The name of Jesus. (laughs) The name of Jesus. You know, there's some pretty scary names out in our world, right? Sickness, disease, cancer, pretty scary. You look at the, your bank account, debt, uh-oh, um, depression, failure, insecurity, discouragement. But Paul comes along and says this in Philippians He says this, therefore God has exalted him, Jesus, to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every other name. If you think cancer is is big, if you think all these other names have any kind of power, why don't you remember the power in the name of Jesus? He's been given the name that is above every other name. And at that name... The name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So here's what you need to know. If you're engaging in spiritual warfare, you need to remember the power of Jesus' name. And when you're going through it and you're, and you're engaging with the enemy, what you need to do is what Paul said in Romans 10, call upon the name of the Lord. He says, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will what? Be saved. I will call upon the name of Jesus. Will you say that with me? I will call upon the name of Jesus. Number two is this. Here's your number two weapon, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> How many of you know that, oh, man, this is fun preaching today. I just love giving the devil a black eye and exposing him for who he is. Now, the blood of Jesus. When Jesus shed his blood on the cross, guess what? He redeemed you. He, brought you, he bought you back, every part of you. It's done. That finished work on the cross, Jesus said it is finished. It is over. It is history. Through the blood, we have forgiveness of our sins. So when the devil comes and tries to tell you, you've done too much. You can't be redeemed. You're too bad. No. Devil, you remember the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's through that blood that we are completely, through and through, forgiven. And it's through that blood that we have freedom. It's through that blood that we have deliverance. It's through that blood that we have healing. And it's through that blood that we have victory. Friends, never underestimate and never forget the power of the blood of Jesus. Look at what it says in Revelation chapter 12. I love this verse. And they defeated him. It's talking about the devil in context. And they defeated the devil by what? The blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were not afraid to die. What defeats the devil? It's the blood of Jesus. And guess what? The word of our testimony. And what's our testimony? Our testimony is the blood of Jesus was shed for me. 
<clears throat> well, I feel like you guys are going to help me preach this today. <laughs> Number three weapon is this, the word of God. The word of God. So we've got the, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and the word of God. This is our sword. When the enemy comes at us with, with lies and deceptions and things, what is our reply? Our reply should be with the word of God. So if the devil comes at me, and I'm just going to give you a few of my examples, and the devil says this, your ministry goals and your vision will, will, are impossible, and they will end in disappointment, and so you better stop, Brian, while you're ahead. <clears throat> And so I go to my word, and I say, is that true, or is that a lie from the enemy? Because this Bible says, let us not lose heart in doing good, for we will reap a harvest in due time if we don't give up. That's God's word. So am I going to believe the lie, or am I going to stand firm and unshakable upon the truth of God's word. So you need to remember this. When you believe a lie from the devil, you empower the liar. Don't believe his lies because you give him you give him influence when you do that. You give him a, a door open for your life when you believe that lie, you empower the liar. And so what we need to do is reject the lie, recognize it for what it is and replace it with the word of God, the sword of the spirit, right? <clears throat> the devil will say, Brian, you're all alone in your struggles and nobody cares. But God's word says this. There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. <laughs> and his name is Jesus. And his word says, you are part of the body of Christ. And the body cares for its members. And Brian, you are not alone because this word says that God has sent the comforter, the precious Holy Spirit to walk with me and talk with me and lead me in the path of righteousness. So am I ever alone? Absolutely not. It's a lie of the enemy to try to steal and to kill and to destroy God's plan for our lives. Another lie is this. God is finished with you. He's finished with you. You've done too much. You've gone too far. You've, you've messed up one too many times. You're not smart enough. You're not good enough. You're completely inadequate, and God is finished with you. <clears throat> is that the truth? No. Well, the Bible says that I can be confident in this. That he who began a good work in me will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Let's talk about the rest of that armor of God. It says this. Paul said to the Christians there, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet Fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up that shield of faith, which, is, which with it you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus and the word of God. Would you say this with me? I will declare the word of God. Will will God. Say it like you mean it. I will declare the word of God. Now listen to me. You're not going to be able to declare that word if you don't know it. <laughs> Study God's word. Memorize God's word. 
This is why church attendance is so important. This is why life groups is so important. This is why going through the growth, I mean, it's all centered upon learning and growing on, in the word of God. <clears throat> How can you use the sword of the spirit if you don't know what it says? Number four is this, praise. <clears throat> Praise is a weapon. <clears throat> Jesus' name, Jesus' blood, the word of God, and praise. These are the weapons of our warfare. This is how we engage in effective, victorious, overcoming spiritual warfare in our lives. Never forget those things. And when it comes to praise, we have to remember this. God inhabits the praises of his people. So when his people start praising and start worshiping who he is, guess what? The atmosphere begins to change. And the presence of God is manifested in a way that's not manifested when we're silent. And if we're not going to praise the Lord, the stones, the Bible says, the stones and the rocks will cry out in praise. So it's our job as the children of God to remember how important our praise is. It's a weapon against the enemy. When praise is offered, the presence of Almighty God shows up in the room. The weightiness of God, the glory of God, the power of who he is manifests when praise is expressed. The power of God's kingdom invades the earth when God's people begin to praise and begin to worship him. I think about the example of Paul and Silas in the book of Acts, chapter 16. They were in some pretty intense spiritual warfare, right? You remember? They were obeying God. They were preaching the gospel. They were being bold in their faith and doing what God had called them to do. And in Acts chapter 16, it says, at about midnight, listen, this is in the darkest time of their lives. They were locked in a prison cell together. And it was midnight. How many of you know that that Oftentimes, it's our midnight place. It's a hard place. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very, um, uh, what's, the, what's the word? A very challenging place. It's, it's, it's always the darkest right before the dawn. And so it was midnight, and they found themselves, and they decided, hey, we're not going to be uh, complaining about everything that's going on, and we're not going to blame God, and we know that God has a plan for us and wants us to be free in Christ, and we're going through it right now. We're experiencing some spiritual warfare, and Paul and Silas together, they thought, well, we better start praying, and we better start singing. I wonder what they were singing, like, great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. What were they singing? How great is our God. How worthy is his name. I don't know what they were singing. They were probably singing Psalm 150. Let everything that has breath, what? Praise the Lord. They began to lift their voices in prayer and sing those songs of praise. And then in that midnight hour, suddenly God shows up. Right? How many of you know that when you begin to praise and you're using the weapons of your warfare... So God, sometimes God can do things suddenly. You don't have to wait for it. You don't have to persevere for it. Some, sometimes, suddenly, your breakthrough can come. How many of you know that God is a God of breakthrough? And so let's see what happens to Paul and Silas. They were praying and they were singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. How many of you know that other people are watching you in your hard times? And what are you doing? What is your testimony? Are you complaining and murmuring and, and oh, God, I got, you got to get me through this? Or are you praying and worshiping and using your weapon of praise? And, and it says this, suddenly, everybody say suddenly. 
This is somebody's suddenly day today, I believe, that if you will lift up your shout of praise, suddenly God is going to hear you and answer you and provide for you. But look at this. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken at once. The prison doors flew open and everyone's chains became loose. <laughs> oh my goodness. The original jailhouse rock, that's right. But instead of the atmosphere, listen, instead of the atmosphere of the prison invading Paul and Silas, they decided to invade the atmosphere of darkness with their praise, with their prayers, with their singing, with their joy. And guess what? Their chains fell off. And the doors were opened. And they were set free. You see, God responded to their praise. Shaking the ground beneath their feet and shaking the unbelief around them that threatened their very lives. So here's what I'm going to say and here's what I want us to say together. I will praise God in every situation. Okay, say it with me. I will praise God in every situation. So today, if you're going through a spiritual battle, I want you to remember that God is calling us to be victorious, to, to walk in the authority and the power that he has given to us, and he has given us what? The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the word of God, and our praise. Amen.